Hello, my name's Lizzie. I'm Anglican. In three and a half months' time, I'm going to be moving into a convent ready to become a postulant. But actually, because I'm going to be away for so many bits of May and June and July, I've worked out I'm only actually going to be in my flat for seven more weeks in total. So I'm really trying to get a move on in minimising uh, as much of my possessions as possible uh, sooner rather than later. And if you've seen my video explaining what a postulant is, you'll know it's it's like a, a discernment period while you're you're sort of living the life within the convent and that it's recommended that you don't necessarily have to get rid of everything before moving in and you put as much as possible into storage and um, so in terms of like my kitchen um obviously as i said in my my 10 ways i'm trying to prepare for the convent things like you're not going to put obviously food into storage so so things like my my tinned food and you're currently on the shelf of my tinned food in my kitchen um one of the things i've been trying to do is just use up as much of that or just get through it um use it up rather than buying new food so i've been getting on with yeah using up as much of my tinned food as possible i'm almost there now um whereas other things like washing machines and slow cookers and things they're the things i'm trying to work out which few bits can i keep in my parents loft and which things will i give to a charity shop or to neighbors so this is a by the way my um, message for my sister if there's anything you see in this video that you would like to uh have on loan um and uh if it turns out that religious life or this community isn't for me then i'll get it back but if i go on to become a novice then then you get to keep it um you can inherit them um so if there's anything you like the look of that you, you'd like to um potentially inherit um let me know that i can keep a, a pile of or a list of which things will go to you rather than to a charity shop for example but here's a a little tour of how i've got on so far with my with my kitchen uh, in terms of minimizing my possessions and just working out what's going to go where as well when i leave my flat at the end of july i will hold your peace. Let's just go around my little kitchen in order. These um, these both need to go back to my mum basically. Um, the bars I've borrowed and this this trolley she gave me like a few years ago. Um, but it, and, until recently it was filled with you know how people store their food in those nice and um, like glass bottles like kilner jars or like jam jars. Um, I used to have a lot of my food, um, or, yeah, all in glass jars, all like. The, all in here it looked like a bit like a an Amish pantry or something but I have got rid of most of those jars now um, and in this video and in similar videos when I talk when I say that I've got rid of things what I usually do I live about a hundred meters from a charity shop anyway but I am um, I live in a block of flats that several like all of us in, in this block of flats are on like particularly low incomes but quite a few people in, in this building are also um that, that are asylum seekers and um, uh, i'm i know my neighbors quite well on my corridor so if i've got something i no longer need i usually either go around and off offer it to my neighbors or i'll leave things out in in our corridor and i'll put a couple of notices up around the building saying oh, there are some free things outside such and such a flat if you'd like to take it and if anything that's still there in a few days time I'll, I'll go and take around to charity shop so I like to give people in my building a chance to have things for free first before I take them around to the charity shop but a lot of this sorting out my flat is just working out which things go to uh yeah well which things I keep which things like which things go to a charity shop and which things go to a a project or um that helps people with kitting out their flats whether asylum seekers or people that um maybe just don't have enough money to afford to to buy the things to buy the contents they need for their home so um yeah that's uh so all, all my glass jars have gone and then um 
a lot of these my, my kind of mentality is that quite, quite a lot of things in my flat are actually from charity shops or pound stretcher and are quite easy to replace anyway so it's only more difficult things or more expen like more difficult things to replace or more expensive things that I'm going to try and keep at my parents so things like pots and pans would be so and um, colanders would be so easy to to buy again should should it turn out that religious life isn't for me or all this community isn't for me that I think I'll just take all these to a charity shop or or give them to a charity that helps uh, asylum seekers with with finding contents for their kitchen and homes and um, so yeah I think all of these will go I'll just wait until the day that I or the week that I'm leaving my flat which will be the end of July um, and then just on one day I'll just have a massive um, just a massive session of taking loads of stuff around either to a charity shop or seeing if a, a project wants to pick them up from me so yeah all of the, I, I won't keep any of my my pots and pans and things if you're wondering what this is this is just a vase I found in my parents home that I was just looking for something to keep my plastic bags in so I've got that on loan as well from my parents um, that's just my apron hanging uh, over here I'll show you in here there's not most of my plates and bowls and things are just from charity shops anyway so um, on the day that I, I leave this flat I'll just take take them around to the charity shop they're probably a lot of them probably came from there originally anyway um, and I don't know if my sister wants any of these mugs or they just go around to a charity shop as well kettle I know my sister's got her eyes on so I've already earmarked that for her um, this is where I've done a lot of work I used to have two baskets just full of I love making soup and casseroles and stews and things in the autumn and winter but now that we're going we're getting it well we're in spring and getting into summer I just know that I'm not going to be making that kind of food again especially as I'm going into the convert in August so I've, I've only kept just the, the very few things that I can see myself using over the summer and just a few things that um, need using up but yeah, I had so many spices and herbs, but I've given those all to my neighbours now. Um, so so that's that's a lot of stuff that's already gone from my kitchen. Um, and then up here, I don't know if my sister wants that. That's what I was using to make like big batches of soup and stew and things. But if not, that can go to maybe a charity shop. Or what would be ideal? Um, there's yeah, that there's a. A charity or a project called Open Hands which is um, run by a, a big charismatic church near me and they they've got um, storage facilities and they will they've even got a van and they're happy to come and collect furniture so quite a few big items of furniture uh, are gonna go to go to Open Hands and we're gonna try and set a date in my last week um, which will be my last week at the flat, which will be the last week of July. We're going to try and set a date for them to bring their van round and just take lots of things from my flat. So um, I think they also take some, I expect they, I think they also help people with things like microwaves. So I don't, they might do like pap testing. So they, they might accept things like toasters and microwaves because a lot of charity shops can't, but I think open hands might. Um, I think there's somebody at my parents' church who, um, who is going to inherit my washing machine and I think open hands while we're on the subject I think they will take my freezer but it, it might be that if my sister can't house them or doesn't want them it might be that open hands could take things like this but they're not such essential items like a slow cooker and um, what do you call that a blender um, I think they try to specialize more on like essentials so uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with those. What would be ideal is I'm going to get in touch with, there are two other projects, there's City of Sanctuary and the Welcome Project, which um, particularly help new arrivals, as, uh, asylum seekers, refugees, people that are, are new to Leicester. Um, and, and I know both charities quite well. So what I might do is um, get in touch with them and let them know the, the kinds of things that are kind of looking for a new home because I, I I can just if religious life turns out to not be for me it's not gonna be difficult for me just to go and buy new like speak like these kind of things utensils um, and what would be ideal is if I contact these charities nearer the end of July when I'm moving out if there's a 
a new arrival, like a, an individual or a family that, that need help with kitting out their kitchen, that would just be ideal because I could just basically kit their whole kitchen out. They can just inherit the contents of this kitchen. Um, that will, plant will obviously, fake plant will obviously go to a charity shop. Um, and yeah, things like this, I won't bother trying to store it at my parents because I can just buy a new uh, draining rack in the future. So all these things will go to charity shops. Uh, the the oven and the fridge came with the flat, so they'll stay. Bin, I guess, will go to charity shop. Um, I've shown you up there. So it's just, oh, I'll show you my drawers as well. So uh, yeah, this, I've made a lot of progress on this cupboard. That that whole top shelf is just all my, what do you call it, like Lord Tupperware boxes. Because when you live on your own and you cook for yourself, you just end up having to store so much food for future, like, um, future portions of whatever you made. So I seem to have more plastic boxes than food now. Um, uh, and all I've really got on this shelf are things like uh, nuts and like dates and um, like dried fruit and oats uh, um, because because I have to I, I start work so early that I have to have breakfast either at work or on the go so a lot of my breakfast either I make homemade flapjack type things or I just eat like nuts and dates or something for breakfast and then I've got I've only got just a bit of pasta now to use up quite a bit of rice uh, Here's a, one of my glass jars I've still got. Um, I've just got that jar of lentils and just, a, a, yeah, this is quinoa, which I don't eat that much, but I guess it will be over the next few months. So I just need to use up those. And really, I've only got a few tins now and pretty much, I think I'll use this up, most of this up just this week in my meals. I'll probably do, I like doing this, um, it's like chili con carne, but rather than, using meat and rice I just use lentils instead and then uh what will I do oh yeah chickpeas I'll just do like couscous which is really cheap and chickpeas and like roasted red onion and red pepper or something and then um, I make this thing which is really nice which is just it's probably like halfway to a Thai curry but it's just rice with coconut milk and cherry tomatoes and sweet corn and that's really cheap and really nice and um, yeah, that's my lunch for later um so yeah, I've, I've done a lot with that cupboard and I've just been clearing out these drawers as well. So again, quite a few things that I know that I won't use now have gone to neighbours. Things like, um, this is just what I've got left now, but things like, I don't know, apple corers, apple slicers that I, I had bought in the past because I needed them at one point, rolling pins, stuff like that. I just know that I won't use. Um, these are just little food bags that I made to try and avoid using plastic so much, she says, next to a roll of bin liners. Um, this is, I had so much stuff from my, from the days when I had a scooter, I had all this WD-40 and I'm, I'm, I found about 10 Allen keys. Um, so now I've just reduced things just to a few screwdrivers and random nails and screws. I, don't, I really don't know what they're for, but I suppose this is my equivalent of my man drawer. And then just a few, um, what do you call it? like warranties and manuals and things and then all I've got left in here is the um, my blender which you saw the box for on top because it doesn't fit anywhere and yeah just a grater, a little microwave thing you can't really see it, a Pyrex measuring jug and a, a sieve and I forgot to show you this, I don't know, it's so dark this is just my um, cleaning bits of cupboard so I guess like, obviously I'll, I'll need to do laundry and clean up until the day that I I leave the flat but I guess just on that day I'll just have to see if my neighbours just want to take remaining bits of conditioner and disinfectant and stuff off me because um, obviously I can't take that to a charity shop and it'd be a waste to put it in the bin so I, yeah hopefully my neighbours will be happy just to inherit last bits of cleaning product. <laughs> so that is, that's my whole kitchen. So yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, well, you, you wouldn't have seen it before, but you can probably appreciate I've, I've cleared out quite a lot. And I just like the fact that just knowing that quite a lot of stuff can directly go to asylum seekers in particular. And I really like the, uh, the thought that maybe there'll be a new arrival in Leicester in the summer and I can just help 
kit out their whole um, kitchen just with my they can just like inherit overnight a microwave a toaster utensils etc so it was uh, yeah hopefully all these things will go to someone that that really couldn't afford to buy them which would be really nice